Well, welcome back. Hey, we have some pretty cool local history, and I'd like to share some of that with you. This is the story of a town that never was, a paper town, and it set the stage for the eventual development of several iconic Southern California beach towns, stretching from Laguna Beach to San Diego. Well, go west, young man. That was the mantra powering America's westward expansion. And it was certainly made easier with the completion of the Transcontinental Railroad in 1869. Well, once you got west, you were encouraged to continue going south. Ironically, there weren't many orange trees in Orange County at this point. It was pure advertising. In this Orange County map created in 1889, you can see the path of the growing rail lines. The first railroad to uh, arrive in Orange County was the uh, Southern Pacific Railroad, which began serving Los Angeles in 1874. They then completed a branch line to Anaheim, as you see here in 1875. It was becoming very fashionable to vacation in California with its mild year-round climate. Uh, here's a station in Fullerton, which was completed in 1888. I wonder who those people are there. As the tracks continue to move south to Santa Ana, uh, you can see here the largest uh, city at that time in Orange County. Santa Ana incorporated in 1886 uh, and became the seat of Orange County in 1889. This station was built in 1887 as they rapidly headed south. I wonder what that gathering is all about. Uh, here's another shot of uh, the Santa Ana station. You can see the Pullman cars there. Uh, some people waiting for the train. Uh, I know they shipped uh, agricultural goods out of there and they, uh, they got manufactured items they needed uh, in the growing town. Here's a station at Orange. Uh, this station at Orange was completed in 1877, only two years after the uh, station was completed in Anaheim. Now, as we move uh, further south, you will eventually come to El Toro. Nothing but a tiny spot on the map uh, here in 1889, but a working rancho at the time. Within a year, a stagecoach line began ferrying uh, mail and passengers to and from Laguna Beach, a city entirely bypassed by the train. In 1887, the Santa Fe California Central was finally linked to San Juan Capistrano, the oldest city in Orange County. Uh, the station there uh, you see now is not the original that was built in 1887. It uh, was rebuilt in 1894 with a mission-style structure. Now, there are tons of story within each image. For example, who's the guy right there holding the shovel? Maybe someone watching this uh, might have an idea. I'd love to hear from you. Now, by the late 1880s, they were growing crops like wheat, barley, walnuts, and oranges in San Juan Capistrano. I believe this uh, image was taken sometime around 1890, and you can clearly see El Camino Real on the left-hand side and what is now El Camino Capistrano on the right, complete with original adobes. Now, on the left, you didn't, if you didn't see it, there was a Mendelssohn Hotel. This photo was taken in 1905. It was built in uh, 1875 as a rest stop for the stagecoach. Uh, now, here's a couple amazing shots of the Capistrano Canning Company taken in 1896. Uh, this factory was built along the railroad siding in 1890. They packed all kinds of fruits, vegetables, and olives, and even made marmalade. Now, I'm not sure the exact location, but I think it's the uh, siding right past the bridge over San Juan Creek or, or San Juan River, depending on the year. You locals know exactly what I mean. After continuing the tracks to the coast, the train reached Rancho Boca de la Playa and the proposed location of the seaside community of San Juan by the Sea. Now this included the site of the oldest surviving residence in California. Originally referred to as the Hyde House, this uh, adobe structure was built in 1790 to store cattle hides for shipment back east. Now, prior to Forster's purchase in 1866, uh, this uh, house was owned by Don Juan Avila, who gave it to his daughter Rosa upon her marriage to Pablo Pryor in 1864. Uh, 
uh, being uh, Forster's sister-in-law, Rosa maintained the possession of the property after he purchased it, and I'm happy to say that it is still in the possession of their descendants. Now, here's what the area looked like uh, about 30 years later in 1917. You'll see it was this photo is titled Motorcycle Hill. They had quite a competition there for about two decades. Um, although San Juan by the Sea never actually materialized, you can still see some recognizable streets that uh, remain from this proposed map of the city, including Las Vegas, Domingo, Sepulveda, and Victoria Boulevard. As we pan up, you can see the uh, train station along the tracks on the far left between Las Vegas and Domingo. Uh, the Pablo Prior Adobe or Hyde House would be located at the very top left of this map. Now this photo was actually titled San Juan by the Sea and was taken in 1887. You can see Princess Point in the foreground and Dana Point behind that. And it's certainly easy to see from that shot what enticed people to move there. Uh, this shot taken in 1900 is looking south from uh, what we used to call Princess Point. Uh, uh, back in the distance is what they used to call Capistrano Bay. Uh, now this shot right here uh, features Miss Blanche Dolph. In 1914, the wealthy Dolph sisters of Pennsylvania built the first permanent residence in Dana Point. Now here is the one and only shot I could find of the uh, San Juan by the Sea train station, which was later renamed Sarah Station. You should recognize the Nordic and or Victorian style uh, of the station seen in many of the other stations along this route. Now, I wonder who this family is. Uh, could the descendants still live locally? If anyone has any information, I'd love to hear from you. Now, in addition to the train station and bathhouse, a dance pavilion was also built to entertain potential investors. This would have been located on the south side of San Juan Creek. Now, where's Waldo? He or she is the only hatless person in this photo. Now, among the other amenities built was a Pioneer Hotel uh, to house uh, visiting potential buyers who arrived on the train. In uh, 1892, it was dismantled and moved to Newport Beach and renamed the Sharps Hotel after its owner. Uh, supposedly, they dismantled it into three sections and moved it to Newport. Not exactly sure how they did that. Now, it seems that uh, Judge Richard Egan, seen here at his home in San Juan, which was built in 1883, had a hand in just about everything during this time. Judge Egan often entertained visiting celebrities and dignitaries like the famous Polish actress, Madame Helena Majeska. In 1892, she actually rented out the entire Pioneer Hotel for the summer as a vacation cottage and invited some of her best friends. Uh, three years uh, later, the building was removed uh, and taken up the coast to Newport Beach and San Juan by the Sea was dead, but not before land speculators began advertising for another boomtown named Dana Heights, also doomed for failure. Now, after completing the tracks down to the beach in 1887, Santa Fe continued laying tracks along the beach southward. I think this uh, aerial shot was taken in about 1925, showing the area that would eventually become the Pier Bowl in San Clemente. By 1888, the railway connected with Oceanside. Uh, you can see the train station there on the right. And I believe this photo was taken from another hotel looking towards the beach. Uh, now, in this shot taken in 1888, you can see a stretch of beach a little further down towards San Diego. Uh, believe it or not, some of the beaches uh, down south look uh, like this still. They're preserved, I suppose, indirectly by the presence of the Marine Corps base on Camp Pendleton. I think we can all give them some thanks. Now, it's interesting to note that the same year San Juan by the Sea was created, Avalon Bay was given its name. By 1888, there was a summer uh, tent city established in Avalon, and like every other new city popping up, access to uh, drinking water would be the key to its city's viability. And yes, that was a stagecoach you saw on the uh, left-hand side of that photo. Now, here is a shot taken in 1917 showing the annual Capistrano Motorcycle Hill Climb. Uh, this shows a good portion of the area that was included in the San Juan by the Sea, the first seaside community in Orange County. The road you saw there was Forster Avenue. Now, I think you'd be hard pressed to 
to uh, get crowds like this today, let alone in 1917. Now here's one of the contestants starting up the hill. Uh, it was a 500 foot hill, had a 40 to 50% grade incline, reaching a, a maximum of 72% near the top. Uh, here's another shot here. Uh, you can see the billboard on the right hand side that you saw earlier. I'm guessing those are orange groves on the right hand side. Uh, oranges uh, became the major crop in Orange County by the uh, turn of the century. Now the winner of the uh, the hill climb in 1917 and the first one to make it over the top was Calvin Lambert. You can see him here on his Excelsior 3-speed. Uh, the event continued until 27 and it certainly was great advertising for the developing uh, surrounding beach cities uh, during the 1920s. Now this photo must have been taken in about 1925 when uh, city founder Ole Hansen began grading uh, the roads in San Clemente. This is the, uh, the Pier Bowl, the centerpiece of his Spanish village by the sea. Now when I saw this photo, I was reminded of an interview I had done with Ole Hansen's son as part of a history research project at San Clemente uh, High School in 1973. Uh, he shared some amazing stories, including one where his dad went up in a World War I era Jenny biplane to take some aerial shots. And I think this might be one of them. Uh, may have also been one of the first guest speakers for the newly formed San Clemente Historical Society when I was asked to present this project complete with a carousel pro full of uh, historic images from the Orange County Archives in Santa Ana. Now this shot taken in 27 is an amazing shot looking down at 204 point. Uh, you saw the entrance to the Pier Bowl. Here's a, a view looking back up. Uh, where that photographer was probably standing. Now, the pier would have been completed, I think, the following year in 1928. Now, about 30 years after the interview with uh, Ole Hansen's son, I found an old VHS tape of some 16 millimeter footage of the San Clemente uh, in its early days. Among them was a clip, I think, of Ole Hansen returning from his reconnaissance flight. Now, this aerial shot of Dana Point looks like it must have been taken sometime in the early 30s. At the same time, Ole Hansen was planning out San Clemente, uh, uh, Sidney Woodruff and fellow investors began uh, racing to develop the coastline in Dana Point. Here he is on uh, day one of sales. Uh, okay, where's Waldo again? Where's the one person with no hat? Uh, now, this shot taken of Dana Point looking south shows an untouched coastline. Well, if you don't count the scenic in, a, a picnic area that was built at the base of the cliffs in uh, 1924. Pretty beautiful, a beautiful shot there. Now, this shot was taken in Capistrano Beach in 1924, and I believe the road you see there would be Camino de Estrella. It's less than a quarter mile from my house presently. Uh, these must be investors looking at property. Uh, Edward Doheny would eventually build his house at the end of this street look, overlooking the ocean. In this aerial shot, you can see the railroad tracks along the beach and the recently completed Roosevelt Highway. Man, look at all that sand. Now, you look at uh, the beach club and the pier from this gazebo that uh, uh, Doheny had built uh, for the benefit of uh, his potential buyers. Uh, both those structures were eventually uh, demolished in the mid to late 60s. Uh, I can hear the photographer right now, uh, just a little bit closer. Now this must have been taken in the late 20s and I wonder what lots on Beach Road were selling for back then. Hmm. People started moving into Laguna Beach area long before the train arrived. Here's a photo of the uh, Thurston House in Aliso Canyon taken in about 1900. In 1871, the Thurston family settled in an abandoned one-room cabin, originally used as a sheep camp and left behind by the first settler in the area, Eugene Salter. Uh, they eventually expanded the house as the family grew. Now, you could easily spend an hour looking at the details in this one photograph taken in 1900. This again is a Thurston house taken from the backside looking down the canyon towards the ocean. Definitely a working farm. Now, if you look carefully, I think you can actually see smoke coming out of the chimney. Uh, amazing shot. Now, here's another shot, probably taken at about the same time, a little closer towards the beach, looking at the Aliso Beach estuary, complete with an early bridge built across Aliso Creek. 
This is the uh, current location of the ranch golf course and resort, and you can now see why they call it the ranch. Now this shot is a, an amazingly clear shot of the Laguna Hotel taken in 1898. It's actually in the same uh, location as the current Hotel Laguna near Main Beach. Now this shot must have been taken uh, before 1926 when the Coast Highway was completed uh, through Laguna. I'm thinking it might be Moss Point, but I'm sure there's some locals out there that will clarify that for me. If you look carefully, you can see a couple Model T's in the driveway. Now, this shot is of the uh, stagecoach coming down from Laguna Canyon, probably from the El Toro train station, taken in about 1900. Uh, now, in 1912, uh, the cliffs advertised that they were the track with water, piping water in from the canyon. This was generally the hinge pin in most land speculation deals during the time. Uh, in this shot of Shaw's and uh, Fisherman's Cove, you can see the distinctive eucalyptus trees on the ridge. They were planted by homesteaders to, to provide building materials, but they, they found out very soon they'd made a poor choice. Uh, now this shot was taken in the mid-20s looking north towards Dana Point. It looks like uh, they're working on the Y during the construction of the Roosevelt Highway through Capistrano Beach and Dana Point. Uh, this section of the highway was finally completed in 1929. Now, when the Great Depression hit in 1929, the newly born beach city suffered, as did the entire country. In 1931, though, the Doheny family donated their beach property to the state, and California's first state beach was formed. Here is a surveyor tasked with mapping the future state park, officially renamed Doheny State Park in 1961. Now in this closing shot here taken, I think probably in the 40s, uh, you can see Doheny State Beach, an amazing playground for those of us old enough to remember what it was like to spend your days hiking the shoreline, exploring the coves and inlets, swimming and diving and gathering your dinner of abalone, fish and assorted seafood from the rocks and tide pool. The way the indigenous uh, Ahashiman must have done for thousands of years. Well. Again, thanks for watching. Aloha.